So today what we're going to do is we're going to cover um, the worksheet coloring an object. Um, we have our two um, spheres that we're going to color up here. Um, and if you read each one, um, we're going to color this one to the left using either warm or cool color scheme. Um, so you're going to pick which one that you want. Um, and either is fine. Or you, for this one, you're going to use an analogous color screen, or scheme. So you're going to um, choose which one you want. And remember that's either one primary or secondary color. And then the um, tertiary colors that are right next to it. So if for this one, if I chose um, violet or purple as my main color, then I would use... Um, a red violet and then a, um, a, a blue violet as well. So um, I'm going to get started on this. Um, we're going to work on the cool or warm color scheme first and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use cool colors so I have my purple, green, and blue here. Alright so if you remember in the past we created these um, with just the graphite pencils um, you have to have your highlight um, we have to have all those wonderful um, shadowings on there and then you also have um, the shadow down here on the bottom so this is kind of what I'm looking for with this um, so with the colors um, that I have here. I've got green, blue, and purple. And tonality wise, um, I see the purple as being the darkest color, and then then blues the um, and then greens the lightest. Um, and you know, you might want to try something different, but that's just kind of how I'm seeing it, and that's how I'm going to work with these colors today. All right, so. One thing to remember with using color pencils is you always kind of want to start with the lightest ones first and then work your way up to the darker colors. So I'm going to start using the green color first for today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coloring it lightly. Um, and also I kind of want to have my, um, my highlight kind of there. So I'm kind of um, just getting that mapped out here where I want that. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I like doing the scumbling technique with the circles because I feel like it gives it a nice kind of even tone. And you can kind of play with it if you want to do cross hatching or hatching with it or um, the stippling, you can go for it and just have fun with it. I, I'm a scumbling kind of person. And I'm going to kind of bring that in so it kind of looks and you can get as neat as you want with this but what I might do is I'm gonna, in order to speed up this process I'm going to do the back and forth technique instead of the scumbling because the scumbling is the one that I use that I'm really um, making sure I'm watching how detailed I get with it this back and forth um, technique kind of helps me to get it colored quickly but I'm not going too hard with it at first because I kind of want a nice even coat all around. So I kind of started with my um, mid-tone coat here. And it's nice to kind of set that up because then it's easier to put the darker colors on top. So you always want to start light and go to dark with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gradually kind of make it a little bit darker. This green color. Thank you. 
And with color pencils, honestly, it's all about layering it. It's all about layers. So you want to just keep kind of building it up and just keep kind of going with it. done here with the green and for instance if you chose to do the warm colors so I have the red yellow and orange here you would start with the yellow first um, and then the orange and then the reds the darkest so if you're choosing those that's kind of the order that you would choose for that So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the blue color, start adding a little bit darker tones in there. As you can see it really helps to kind of build up those shadows in there, that nice value. Remember that we need that reflected highlight down here so you don't want to make it super dark. See, I kind of just keep on building it up, building it up till kind of where I'm at a point where I'm happy with it. Okay, now I'm going to go in with the purple a little bit. I go in with those darker colors, and it just kind of really adds a nice touch to it. really helps me to create some of those darker tonalities with this. Okay, so one technique that I like to use in order to kind of help blend is, I'm going to actually go back in with the green. And this is for the people that especially don't have um, the blending um, pencil that we talked about last time, um, especially with the Prisma colors and everything. Um, so I'm just going to go in with my lighter green color and I'm going to go over some of those edges to kind of blend it better. And if you're using Prismacolors, it is a softer lead, so this is a great technique to help kind of build up those colors. Kind of even it out. Maybe use that um, scumbling technique on that um, to kind of make it a nice even tone. But you see how, you know, making all these layers just kind of blends those colors in together. So I could still keep going on and building up this object, but I don't want to go too far because I also want to be able to make sure I get through this whole worksheet with you guys. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do the core shadow. Um, since I'm going for um, cool colors, Let's see. I'm going to use my complementary colors in order to create um, 
the shadow for this. So what am I actually going to do? So let's see. I'll kind of use my purple since it's the darkest one. So I started light handed and then you can kind of use some more pressure in order to obtain those nice, honestly with color pencils and just pencils in general, it's all about hand pressure on your lights and your darks with it. You can get so many great tones and um, of that same color just by lightening up your hand or pressing a little bit harder. Okay, so I've kind of created that. And then I'm going to go over that with blue just to kind of give it just a little bit of a darker, maybe add in those darker shadowy areas with that. So it, it still kind of creates a contrast for the sphere but it's still using some of those same colors. And I know that I said usually um, light colors first, but for this case I used um, the purple and then went over it with the blue. So it's good to experiment and see what kind of works for you. Because maybe um, if I did the blue and then the purple on top, it, I wouldn't have gotten that same effect. So, alright. So, for this one, um, I'm going to use the analogous color scheme. Um, and so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with what I said before. And I'm going to use that um, the violet as kind of my main um, color. And then I've also got um, reds and greens for this. Wait, just kidding, not green, blue. Ha ha, blue. Where's my blue? There's my blue. Ha ha, there we go. Um, and because I understand that a lot of you guys don't have the um, those various colors, um, if you have that 72 box of colors, by all means, use the, I highly recommend using like the yellow um, orange or whatever you know you the tertiary colors or maybe even another off color you see how this blue is actually called peacock blue um, so you know try to find like a mix between blue and green you know um, and you can experiment with those to get the analogous um, color schemes um, but I'm going to be demonstrating just using the three um, basic colors so I have a blue a purple and a red for this one Um, just to kind of create that. So since I'm going to be kind of using all of them together um, to kind of create more of that analogous um, color scheme, um, I'm going to start with the red first because to me that's kind of the lightest tone and then I'll go blue and then I'll go um, purple on this and kind of like with the warm colors I'm going to kind of combine them together so what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know you're going to map it out the highlighted area and same thing with this just going to kind of go over the whole thing And if you can't remember all those uh, analogous color schemes, make sure that you refer back to the color um, worksheet. Um, that's a great reference um, to have in order to complete it. And to follow along and to know what we're talking about. So I would definitely keep that one handy, maybe if your sketchbook has a um, if it has a pocket in it that would be a great place to put that worksheet to have as a reference 
So I'm kind of just building up my colors now. And I don't want to get too... This one's not going to be as probably as pretty as the last one I made because I really want to get to the bottle part down here. La 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 la, coloring, coloring the worksheet. So you would try to find which um, which one was the lighter color, and you try to go. And I'm just kind of doing that same technique that I did with the last one. You go light, and then you kind of darken it up a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is, so um, I'm going to use kind of my, I'll use the blue and kind of go over it a little bit, over here, and you can kind of play around with it and see what um, works for you the most, but I also wanted to have that kind of blue purple feel to this and since this is supposed to be red violet I'm also going to go over it with the purple just to kind of create that red violet tonality but as you can see um, purple is a very dark color and so I'm going very light with it because I don't want it to get too overpowering Then I'll make it dark over here since these are my shadows. And since I find the blue to kind of be a little bit of a um, darker tonality, I'm going to kind of blend that in with the purple here. Just have fun with it and experiment with it. See what kind of works best for you. What you think looks the best. scumbling technique going on and it would probably look a little bit nicer um, if I was using more of um, the tertiary color pencils but I kind of wanted to show you guys just using three pencils and what you can do with that So I'm going to kind of leave that one there. Just I know there's more still work I could do with that one. Um, but I don't want to get too into it and not be able to show you guys the rest. Um, and then for the bottom, um, maybe for this one I'll start with the blue and do the um, purple on top of it to kind of show you the difference from that other shadow.
So as you can see, you totally get two different tonalities there. So this one's kind of more the blue and that one's kind of more the purple. All right. So yeah, I know this one could use a little bit more work. Um, both of them honestly can with like blending and everything. Um, but I am just going to keep rolling with it. So down here on the bottom, um, I'm just going to make this one quick so I don't make this video too long. Um, my printer had a little bit of a hiccup as in it didn't want to um, print the color. Um, so, and that's totally fine. Um, I'm looking at the picture on my laptop screen. Um, and I also put on the online high school the bigger picture. So if you want to see more detail into it, you by all means go for it and use that um, the detail. Um, but I wanted to put it on the worksheet in case you got ink and stuff. Um, but for this one, you're just drawing what you see. And um, so you're just going to kind of sketch out um, using a pencil. And having your eraser handling, you're just going to kind of sketch out this one. And I'm not going to probably be able to draw the whole thing for you since I am kind of running a little out of time here. But you're just going to kind of sketch this out. And also, um, while I'm just kind of working here a little bit, um, don't forget that if you can't print this worksheet out and you're having some issues with that, don't be afraid because you can always just look at the information that you need and complete the worksheet in your sketchbook. So I'm just going to kind of keep on going with this. definitely not my best bottle. Doesn't help that I'm kind of rushing it a little bit. And I, I did something that looks a little bit more transparent um, just so you guys can kind of get a little um, practice with working with those. By all means that is not perfect but I have tried. Now I'm not actually very fond of these top parts, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of erase them a little bit. just my basic bottle outline here um, so and I use just using my pencil for that and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in and for this one um, the colors that I would use in order to look at this um, I would use my orange color for sure I would use yellow you could probably put a little um, purple in there um, which is great because um, remember purple and um, yellow are complementary colors um, and then I also have a white and a black color and a brown so I was kind of keep with that color scheme with this bottle um, and just leave your red green and red somewhere else um, so for this one, um, you want to start light. So you want to map out um, kind of where you want those really bright whites at. Um, maybe you want to do that with the pencil first. Um, but you're just going to kind of map that out.
or if you don't if you want to you can use just the color um, because sometimes if you color over especially with like a yellow or something it might show the pencil lines um, so I guess that's just kind of personal preference on what you want to use and so I'm going to try not to color in those spots with my color pencils um, even though what I'm going to do is you know if you use a dark color so I use my black there and you try to do white on top of it it doesn't really work too well as you can tell from the screen so you want to um, I'm always testing on my color pencils by the way it's always might it might even be handy to um, get another sheet of paper maybe out of your sketchbook or something and practice with it. Um, I'm always trying to test to see what colors work well together. Um, maybe do some practice. Me, I draw animals all the time, so I do practice furs with the color combinations all the time. Um, so it's always nice to kind of um, have something next to you in order to um, use as a reference. Um, but remember, you're going to start with the light colors first and then you're going to go dark. So I'm definitely going to start with the yellow first. I'm not going to go in with the whites until I'm kind of done with it, but I'm not going to color in these sections. Um, I'm going to keep that strictly. And I'm actually going to lighten those up a little bit so my yellow doesn't show totally through it. And it might be a little hard to see it on the screen, and I apologize for that. But I can see it here, so um, I'm going to just start with this yellow color all the way through. There are some highlights kind of up here, so I am going to leave a little bit of some white spaces up there. Not a lot, but a little bit. And so you're just going to kind of look what you see and not what you know. So make sure that you're drawing kind of all those wonderful things that you're seeing on the paper and not necessarily what you know that you know about that bottle. Um, and I'm going to officially run out of time here in a minute. you're just going to keep on coloring. So I don't want to go, I want to um, kind of show you guys how to build up the colors real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And I'm going to work strictly on the top here a little bit just to kind of show you guys how to build up the colors with that. Um, so I already kind of had the yellow up there and I'm going to go in with the orange. And I'm looking, you need to make sure that you are looking at that bottle so you can kind of see where the colors are, where those colors fall at. In this image.
looking, looking at the picture. Um, you can add a little bit of purples here and there. Um, I'm seeing some really dark colors over here on the edges. That'll kind of help me to define my bot a little bit. You just keep building it up, building it up. You can go back over with the orange and kind of blend those colors in a little bit if you want. You, know, you can always kind of go back in with those lighter colors to help build up those darker colors. Kind of blend it in a little bit better. Um, you know, maybe go in with the brown some. That's really good for creating those darker tonalities over the orange. Those shadows kind of in the background. Then I'm going to go in with the black a little bit. But you don't want to use the black until very last because the black really kind of makes itself known in these pieces. But as you can see, I'm building up the colors, building it up. Um, I don't know if this is the best picture in the world, especially since I'm not anywhere near done with the details and such for it, especially since I am very particular how things kind of work with it but you kind of see where I'm going at with using that bottle and it's not exactly the same as the bottle in the picture but I'm trying to make it as close as possible especially since I'm brushing since this is a 30 something minute video um, but definitely just kind of work with it and just kind of experiment if you're not sure how a color combination is going to work with each other like I said get a separate sheet of paper maybe in your sketchbook or something and draw on that um, also um, for those who might need some extra bonus points um, are looking for a little extra something to do or if you just want to be a, um, an overachiever and just kind of go for it and really practice with the colors um, you can turn your paper over to the back um, or you can use a, another page of your sketchbook find an object around your house and um, draw that object using the colors um, kind of using those color schemes that we talked about um, practice with um, you know the different colors you need to look and really see what colors are in that object um, at first glance with this bottle you might not think there was purple in that bottle but if you look here on the edges and everything of it there's definitely some of that purplish kind of tones in there maybe a little bit on the bottom um, so, you know, you definitely just need to look and see um, what you may find. Alright, so that's all for now, especially since it's a 35 minute video. Um, but thank you so much, guys. And once you're done with this video, you can go on ahead and have a wonderful day and a happy drawing.